Hello, it's me again. I've been having quite a few thoughts about myself recently and what has led me to be who I am today and all the things I've learned in high school since I just graduated from high school. And I've been thinking about these things as I'm going into college and thinking about all the changes that happened during high school and then, you know, I've been thinking about what's gonna happen in this, you know, next step of life. And while I was thinking about these things, I came to the realization that there's a lot of things that I really wish I could have gone back in time and told my freshman self before I started high school. High school for me was kind of a, a dark time for a little bit there. And I realize now that I've learned so much from my freshman to my senior year. I've changed so much. I can't even believe it's been four years. It feels like an eternity. And I really feel like I have developed as a person and kind of figured out who I'm gonna be for the rest of my life. Now obviously that's subject to change, but I am definitely further ahead than I was four years ago, which is, you know, kind of how life works. Anyways, I thought it would be a good idea to make a video about 15 things that I wish I could go back in time and tell my freshman self. So without further ado, here are 15 things I wish I could tell my freshman self. Number one, you're going to change and that's okay. And there's nothing wrong with that. You're gonna be growing and learning and developing. You're not done as a person. You still have a long ways to go and it's okay. To change now obviously there's a difference between you know changing yourself to fit in or you know to attract a certain person versus then changing yourself just you know working on little parts of yourself uh, just to better yourself as a person number two you don't have to have everything figured out it's okay to not know things. Now, I think I've always known this concept, but it never really crossed my mind as reality or something that I need to really take into consideration until my senior year when we went on senior survival, which for any of my fellow classmates out there that are watching this right now, you know that was intense. Learn to embrace other people's ideas and work with other people and, you know, understand how other people work. What I would like to convey to my freshman self is that you, yes, you have you might have good ideas, but don't just because of that, don't shut out everyone else's ideas. Every person's mind works so different and uniquely and everyone sees the situation differently and everyone has a different process of you know figuring that situation out or figuring a problem out so i'm not saying just throw your ideas out the window but what i am saying is be open to other people's ideas number three it's okay if you don't look like every other girl if anyone of you out there who's watching knows me you know that i love gymnastics and i am based in gymnastics um and this is you know kind of because there was some things when I was younger, um, when I was in a little tumbling group in my grade school, I was expected to be a top because that's just what girls were. I was expected to be the one, you know, who was on top of things and being held and, you know, just that. Comments were made and at the end of the day, I did not feel comfortable any longer being a top. And so I became a base. <laughs> and. I absolutely love it. Something that I struggled with uh, through high school, especially like the first three years, but I mean, it still sometimes um, is an emotional battle for me. Just because you're strong and you're athletic and you're tough does not mean you're not pretty or you're not feminine or you're not desirable or you're a guy. <laughs> There was at one point my freshman year where I was literally, I was freaking out because I didn't know what was wrong with me and why I was so different than every other girl, why I was so much bigger, you know, bigger built, um, stronger. Let's be honest, through high school, I was stronger than most of the guys really up until my senior year. I was stronger than most guys in my class, maybe all of them. And that can be kind of hard uh, for a girl, you know, to be the big one, be the tough one, and you know still be yourself but then try to feel feminine um, and feel like a girl when you're the one that's big and masculine don't be afraid to show how strong you are and it's also okay to sometimes not be strong physically or emotionally just because you're strong does not mean you have to be strong 
that's a really good line. <laughs> I'm gonna write that down. I'm gonna put a little heart emoji next to it. Number four. I've had some issues in the past, um, you know, with people making comments about my body, about my weight, um, but it was really only ever a couple people and it would reoccur with the same people. The primary person that would do this uh, is in my immediate family and being a girl, you know, and trying to be comfortable with your body and trying to live up to society's standards and trying to see yourself as beautiful and be confident in your own skin is hard enough by itself without someone constantly, you know, tearing you down and making comments about you that f make you feel like you failed, you know. Literally, no one cares about how your body looks. Like, no one looks at you and says, oh my gosh, they're so disgusting. Like, unless you're a crappy person, you don't do that to people, right? Like, I always thought, you know, people were judging me and, you know, looking at how disgusting I was. And then I, you know, thought about it and I thought, well, I don't do that to anybody. And, you know, I thought about, you know, girls that were bigger than me and how personally I thought they were beautiful. You know, even if they're a little heavier set. Literally no one cares other than like the, like the one or two people to keep making the comments. No one cares about how your body looks except for you. So stop acting like people care. It's okay. Number five, just because you don't feel God's presence with you or you feel like he's let you down again or that he's abandoned you, you know, or, you know, that you've cried out your soul to him and you've just heard nothing. Just because you feel like that does not mean that's the reality. I was a student week of prayer speaker uh, for my school and at the school I went to that was kind of a big deal um, and it was taken very seriously. And my talk was on how, you know, our reality is not God's reality and how we perceive things and what we think we know is not God's reality. If reality changes according to what God sees and wants it to be. and. I think that's something that's important to keep in mind is that in God's reality, I, I I wish I could have told myself, you know, just, I know you feel like you're alone. I promise you, you're not. He's there. I, and I, to this day, I still don't know, you know, why some things happened the way they did or why I felt so abandoned, but I know him well enough to know that he didn't just leave me. and. You know, one day I'm gonna to get to ask him that and I feel like it'll make sense then. Number six, just because you don't have a boyfriend or you feel like you're the only one in the entire school that's never dated, that does not mean you are not desirable or that you are not worth dating. You know, I wonder sometimes, well, what's wrong with me? You know, why don't people want me? Um, and I, I wish I could have told myself at a younger age that this is, it's really not the case. There's nothing wrong with you. Um, if anything, you're intimidating, you know, to guys because you're independent and you're strong and you know what you want and you don't take crap from anybody. Just know that just because you never get asked to banquet, that does not mean that you're the least desirable. High school, most people are not mature enough to have a mature relationship, so if that's what you're looking for or if you're going into high school looking for a relationship, don't, don't do that. Just, just go with the flow and see what happens, honestly. Number seven, Jillian, dress your age. <laughs> this is something that I didn't really struggle with from my sophomore year on, but my freshman year I definitely did because my mother is a very classy person and, you know, um, growing up she, you know, dressed me like how she dresses. And so I feel like when I got to high school, I was dressing like, you know, a person in their mid 40s and everyone else was dressing like teenagers like you're supposed to. I did feel very out of place because of that. Number eight, just because you aren't talented in one area doesn't mean you're not talented at all. This is something that I always struggle with. Um, you know, I think I have to be good at everything to be good in general. And, you know, I feel like I have to be good at art. I have to have good grades. I have to be a good social person. I have to be good at gymnastics. I have to be athletic. You know, 
I don't have to be good at all these things. And I, that's something I wish I could have told my past self, like, yeah, it's good to, you know, work towards things and better yourself and, you know, gain talents and, you know, gain skills. But, you know, sometimes I get really dejected when I just, no matter how hard I try, I just can't do something as well as that person can do it. But yeah, that, that is something that I wish I could have told myself, uh, is that just because you're not talented in one area doesn't mean you're not talented at all. And just because you're not the best in that area doesn't mean you're not good at it. Number nine, I didn't really have an issue with this, um, but I realized why other people do have an issue with it. And so I thought I would just throw it in here because my freshman self would be able to help my friends who are struggling with this. Drama comes from opening your mouth. If you keep your mouth shut, drama doesn't happen. What I've noticed, and I, I mean, I never struggle with drama, and I always thought that was just because I'm not a social person, but I don't think that's the reason. I think it's just because, you know, I know when to keep my mouth shut. I know when something is someone else's issue and something that I don't need to get involved in. You know, this is like, this is for them to figure out. I can give advice, you know, I can be there to support, but I'm not gonna try and be the mediator between these two parties so much drama is literally just he said she said you know he told her that this guy told this person that <laughs> it's exhausting you know if someone tells you something stop that information where it is at you don't let it continue on to the next person because that's not helping anybody number 10 jillian Get out of your room. Stop studying so much. I know there's a test tomorrow. It's okay. Go out of your room, go to rec, and freaking hang out with people. Meet people. Be stupid. Be goofy. And God forbid, get in trouble. This is something that I still struggle with because I feel like I have to be, you know, squeaky clean and, you know, I have to be responsible and study and, you know, ace that test tomorrow or, you know, get the homework in. And yes, all that's good things, but I, I really feel like, you know, there's a time for everything. And something that I've noticed is that there's a time for being a little irresponsible. And that is, you know, going and being with your friends instead of studying. I know this might be a little bit, you know, controversial, but you know, at the end of the day, you're not gonna remember the times when you studied really, really hard and, you know, got the grade that you earned on a test. You're gonna remember the things that you did with your friends. And something that I most regret is that my freshman, I, I have almost no memories from my freshman year because it was completely spent in my room doing homework or just being alone. I wish that I would have gotten out and, you know, met people and been friends with people and socialized. Number 11, I wish I could tell myself, don't do the things that you think you're expected to do or do the things that you think you should do to be, you know, a good kid or be responsible. Do what makes you happy and like, you know, truly fulfills you. It's okay to not be squeaky clean. Number 12, a leader is not the person who's on top or in the spotlight. A leader is someone who is at the bottom of, you know, the figurative pyramid, you know, and a leader is someone who is holding everybody else up and who is, you know, encouraging everybody and um, supporting everybody else. A leader is not the one that you see at the top making the show. Number 13, it's okay to not have a group of friends. In high school, everyone travels, you know, in a pod and, you know, there's the really cool group and there's kind of the weird group and there's like the country group and there's, you know, all this different stuff. And I had friends in every group. And for a while, I thought that was something wrong with me. Like I didn't really belong anywhere. But then I realized that it's actually because I can belong in a variety of places because I'm a very, um, you know, kind of I have a very diverse personality, so I can fit in in a lot of different places. It's okay to have individual friends everywhere. You don't have to have, you know, your select group. Number four, number 14. Just because you're the only one doing something does not mean you're doing something wrong. Or just because you're the only one not doing something doesn't mean you're not doing something you should be doing. It's okay to be individual. And finally, number 15. Be nice to yourself. I saw, you know, a post on Facebook or something that said, 
um, you know, be kind to yourself because you're the one you spend the most time with. And I realized that sometimes I can really beat up on myself, you know, internally and emotionally. We think that it's not really a big deal and that, well, I can take it and, you know, well, I deserve it. I've really had to work on treating myself how I would treat someone else. And I think that's really an important concept because I used to think that it was being, you know, strong to beat up on myself. And I wish I could have told myself, you know, be kind to yourself, accept your, you know, accept your flaws, don't hate yourself for them. It's okay to make mistakes and don't beat yourself up when you do because you wouldn't do that to someone else, so why would you do it to yourself? Anyways, that is 15 things that I wish I could go back in time and tell my freshman self. If you enjoyed this video, go ahead and click the like button. If you want to see more things like this, go ahead and hit the subscribe button. And I don't know why, but the notification bell isn't actually there. Um, I've been saying, you know, hit the notification bell for when I come up with new things. It's not there, so I need to figure that out. Actually, if it is there, if you're seeing it right now, please let me know in the comments because I can't see it when I go on YouTube, but it might just be, you know, because it's my channel. I'm not really certain, so if you could help me figure that out, that would be awesome. I would love to tell you when my next video is going to come out, but my life is completely unpredictable, and I don't take YouTube seriously enough to have a set schedule for when things are going to happen, so just be on the lookout for more videos. And like always, see you in the next video. Bye!